How you doing, Econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. In the last video, we talked about demand using milk. And in this video, we're going to talk about supply using dairy farmers. Paul, this is just stupid. Why are we doing this? I look more like a cowboy than I do a dairy farmer. Actually, a cowboy is what a dairy farmer should be called. Cowboy, the way we know him, should be called a horse boy. And Dallas Horse Boys has a pretty nice ring to it. Now, if there's one thing I know about, it's dairy farming. Just joking, I don't know anything about dairy farming. But I do know about supply and the law of supply. The law of supply says there's a direct relationship between price and the quantity supplied. When the price increases for milk, that's gonna increase the quantity of milk produced. This is because an increase in the price gives an incentive for dairy farmers to produce more because they wanna make more profit. So a supply curve is upward sloping. When the price increases, the quantity supplied increases. And again, when there's a change in price, that moves along the supply curve. But the supply curve can also shift. Just like demand, an increase in supply is always to the right, and a decrease is always to the left. Yeah. Using milk as our example, let's talk about the five shifters of supply. Man, I just filmed this after drinking all that milk. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. Ooh boy. The first one is the change in the price of inputs or resources. So if there was a huge increase in the price of dairy cows, that would cause the supply of milk to decrease. Since you need cows to produce milk, an increase in the price of that key resource means we'd be producing less milk. The second shifter is number of producers. So if out of nowhere there's an increase in the number of dairy farmers, that would increase the supply of milk. The third shifter is a change in technology that would affect productivity. So new advanced milking machines would cause the supply for milk to increase and shift to the right. Another shifter is government involvement, such as taxes or subsidies. A subsidy is when the government wants firms to produce more, so they give them money to produce more output. This would cause the supply curve to shift to the right. A tax is just the opposite. This would take away producers' money, and since they don't have money to produce stuff, the supply would shift to the left and decrease. And the fifth and last shifter is future expectations. If a producer thinks they can make more profit on their products a few weeks from now, they'll hold back supply now and then supply more later on. So here's the question for you. What happens to supply when the price increases? Gee, that milk! Nothing. Remember, a change in price only affects quantity supply. The supply is not going to change. Remember, a change in price moves along the supply curve, and a change in something else, one of the five shifters, will cause the actual supply curve to change. Well, that Mr. Clifford really helps me understand these economic concepts. All right, now we finally have enough information to put supply and demand together. Over here we have the demand schedule and demand curve from the market we talked about in the previous video, the market for milk. Remember, demand goes to the dirt. Right here we have the supply curve for milk that we talked about in this video. And of course, supply goes up to the sky. Now they come together and they set the market equilibrium price and quantity sometimes called the market clearing price and quantity. $3 is the one spot where the quantity demanded exactly equals the quantity supplied. Again, that's called equilibrium. But what if we're at disequilibrium? What if the price is way up here at $5? The quantity demand is only gonna be 10 gallons, right? When the price goes up, people don't wanna buy as much milk. But when price goes up, producers wanna produce more milk and the quantity supplied is gonna be right here at 50 gallons of milk. The result is gonna be something called a surplus. A surplus is when the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. And how much is the quantity of the surplus? Well, in this case, it's 40 gallons of milk. It's the 50 gallons of milk that were produced minus the 10 gallons that were actually bought. Now, unless there's some sort of government involvement or something else weird happening in this market, a surplus is gonna eventually fix itself. If producers were producing all this milk, but no one's buying at that high price, what are the producers gonna do? Well, they're gonna put all the milk on sale and they're gonna lower it down to the equilibrium price. But what if price fell even further than that and it fell down to $1? So at a low price, consumers wanna buy 80 gallons of milk, but producers don't wanna produce very much, right? They're only gonna produce 10 gallons of milk. And this creates a shortage. A shortage is when the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. And how much is the shortage in this situation? Well, it's 70 gallons. The quantity demanded of 80 minus the 10 quantity supplied. And again, unless something weird is happening in this market, the shortage is gonna fix itself. Now, up to this point, we've only talked about how a change in price will move along the demand or along the supply curve. The next video is gonna talk about the entire demand curve or supply curve shifting which will change the price and the quantity. Make sure to check out that video and other videos explaining the supply and demand curve, all right? Till next time. Uh -huh. The milk! Oh, the milk!